Let's take a look at our lineup today here on the now and there are concerns about concussions that are continuing to grow and now there's new questions if the policies that schools have to prevent these brain injuries are being followed. Women could get a new way to ease the pain of childbirth, how virtual reality is changing labor and spotting depression in teens. It can be a challenge to tell the difference between something serious and typical teen behavior. So ahead, how to make sure that young people in your life are getting help. This is the now Indy on RTV6. I'm Amanda Starantino. Indianapolis is blazing a trail and introducing the first living monument in the country. Troy Washington is working for you to explain what the newest addition to Monument Circle stands for. The monument makes its purpose clear. It's a way to honor those heroes who are still living. It's the first of its kind. General Stuart Goodwin says Indiana War Memorials Commission partnered with Polycor to bring the 4,000 pound piece of Indiana limestone out. On Tuesday, people visiting Monument Circle got the first peek at the new addition. It reminds me of the, uh, the Visit Indy, NDY. You see in the airport, a couple other places around town I've seen it. Uh, where people stand next to it, take a picture. So what makes this monument unique? It gives veterans the chance to climb steps in front of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument to mount the limestone and stand proud. Hoosiers get it. They understand about what it means to protect their state and their nation. And so this is just a, a kind of a fun way for veterans to, uh, whether they come in uniform, whether they wear, you know, flip-flops and, and cutoffs and, and get their pictures taken. It's estimated that more than a million people flock to Monument Circle each year. Now all that foot traffic is bound to bring veterans who won't just look at the monuments. They can step up and fill a part two. Working for you in downtown Indianapolis, Troy Washington, RTV6. And for now, the agreement with Polycorp is only for a year, but the partnership can be extended. A big step forward in the building of a park to honor Delphi teens Abby Williams and Libby German. The Delphi Park will receive donated light poles to illuminate its softball fields and playgrounds. The Purdue Research Foundation donated 10 outdoor light poles and fixtures for the Abby and Libby Memorial Park. The teens were murdered in February of 2017 and the crime remains unsolved. A Duke Energy crew removed the poles yesterday from some former intramural fields and put them on a trailer for delivery at the park. The poles will be painted before installation. Kevin showers around today. Hopefully you stay dry. It's not the kind of day where you had to take off running to get from your car into a building and not get drenched. I love that view there. You're looking down at the memorials as you look straight north from Salesforce Tower on the Meridian on your left and Pennsylvania Street on your right. Temperature 44. Not much swing in the temperature through the day today. We're locked in. The humidity is 89%. We still have the drizzle, mist, and even some fog. All of this gray represents cloud cover. The showers very light, and those will continue, I think, to disappear or diminish. Fog is an issue, especially in the western half of the state, but at times visibilities will drop to a mile or less, not just this evening, but overnight into the morning hours tomorrow. Temperature in Indianapolis 44 in the upper 30s, as you can see in Crawfordsville, but generally about 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Through the evening hours, the drizzle and mist will continue and then fade away by 11. Some patches fog 41 just before midnight. A fond farewell today for beloved Panda Bebe. He's actually in that FedEx crate you're looking at right here, leaving the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. and heading to China. And this is how he's going to get there. His own private plane stocked with 66 pounds of bamboo. Now he is leaving as part of an agreement that the National Zoo has with China. And as Maya Rodriguez tells us, whether those agreements are renewed come amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and China. He's a 250 pound four year old heading for his homeland. For more than a week now, crowds have gathered to say bye bye to Bei Bei. He's captured our hearts for over four years, and we want to say thank you for all the joy, smile, happiness, laughter he's given us. Bei Bei, a name that means precious treasure in Mandarin Chinese, is embarking on a 16 hour flight back to China. It's part of an agreement between the zoo and the Chinese government, something the panda keepers knew would happen one day, but still find tough to face. There's the very professional side of me that's known for the moment he was born, per the loan agreement, that he has to return to China. But the, the personal side of me, I, you know, he's one of my favorite animals I've ever worked with. Every panda in zoos around the world are, for all intents and purposes, on loan from China. Here in Washington, Bebe's parents will stay for now. 
Their agreements are up next year. Uh, they are on loan with us through December of next year, at which point there will be a renegotiation about what we're doing with those guys. Other than the National Zoo, only two others in the U.S. have pandas, Atlanta and Memphis. The San Diego Zoo's pandas had to be returned to China in April when their agreement was not renewed by the Chinese government. Zoo officials there said the contract was up and the panda's return had nothing to do with U.S.-China tensions over trade and tariffs. Back in the nation's capital, panda fans hope Bebe's parents, Mei Shang and Tian Tian, get to stay in D.C. for years to come. We're so attached to Mei Shang and Tian Tian. We really wish that they could stay longer here in Washington, D.C., because they're, they're the um, power couple in D.C. A power couple in a town that can be pandemonium. In Washington, D.C., I'm Maya Rodriguez reporting. All right, Maya, thank you. Let's get back to our lineup here on The Now. There are new concerns about concussion prevention policies at schools. We're going to look into what could be keeping kids from being protected. And at this time tomorrow, law enforcement, canine officers, and members of the public will be starting to gather for memorial service for Fisher's canine officer Harley. Officer Harley was shot and killed in the line of duty during a manhunt last week. The memorial service and celebration of Harley's life will take place tomorrow at Fisher's High School in the main gym. Everyone is invited. Doors open to the public at 5. The ceremony begins at 6. Let's start the now news feed. A man is suing Burger King over the impossible burger. The man accusing BK of false advertising because they claim it's a vegan option, yet it is cooked on the same grill as meat. Well, there are concerns of airlines contributing to air pollution. And EasyJet says it is the first major airline going carbon neutral. The British budget airline says it will spend more than $30 million next year compensating for CO2 emitted from its fuel. Well, this is an incredible story of a dog finding its way home after six years. Get this, Prance is back in Illinois. After being found in California, a microchip confirmed it was her. It's unclear how she made it all the way out there. What is a controversial topic at schools around the country? Concussions. Experts are still debating how to avoid them, and all states do have some sort of guidance on how to keep student athletes safe. But a new study released today by the Center for Injury Research and Policy finds that not all schools are implementing concussion policies. So why aren't these policies enforced? Well, investigators say a lot of it has to do with school sports culture. There's a pressure on athletes to power through the game. They don't want to be removed if they want to continue play. And also the resistance from coaches and the parents, they want to win the game and they did not understand the severe consequence of a concussion. The report found some players may be afraid to speak up about symptoms because they don't have health insurance. Now, if they aren't treated by a doctor for symptoms that they report, they won't be allowed to play again. Researchers say that coaches and parents need to take responsibility to help protect kids. Researchers say it's important for parents to ask the school what the procedures are if a student's hurt during a game. They also need to make sure that students are being educated about concussions. Researchers say concussion laws are vague and don't offer schools enough guidance on how to create policies. Ahead in our lineup, spotting depression in teens, that can be a challenge. Ahead, how to make sure the young people in your life are getting help. Some scary moments in a Kokomo convenience store as a masked man tried to rob it at gunpoint overnight. Surveillance pictures show the suspect wearing a cartoon mask pointing the gun at the clerk. He fired one shot before leaving without taking any cash from the register. The clerk was not hurt. It happened shortly before 3 a.m. at the quick stop on Marklin Avenue. If you have any information on this, call Kokomo police. Spotting signs of depression in children can be difficult. The CS Mott Children's Hospital looked into the issue and it says the biggest challenge is identifying what's typical up and down adolescent behavior and what might be a serious problem. At what point does the teen's worry, anxiety, or possible depression feel like it's interfering with that kid's ability to enjoy life or participate fully in life? Now, parents in this study said they want to help figure out if their child is suffering from mental health issues when you think of depression or anxiety. Now, they're on board with schools getting involved. The national recommendation for depression screening is 12 years old. Now, you can't talk to your pediatrician if you're worried and make sure that kids have multiple people they can talk to. Who are the other adults in your life 
that can be trusted go-to individuals, as we call them. Could be a coach, could be somebody from your church or synagogue or mosque. It could be somebody at school, um, family, friend. The survey said one in four parents said their child knows a peer or classmate who is depressed. Now, a positive part of that is experts say that that just means that kids are willing to talk about it more. Tariffs are costing American dairy farmers and American cheesemakers. Elizabeth Ruiz found they could start costing all of us as well. Welcome to Cheese Importers. We started in 1976 out of our family home with six packages of cheeses from Wisconsin. From olives and pastries to European home goods, its main attraction is in the name. Cheese Importers offers a selection of 350 imported cheeses, most of them from Europe. Countries like Italy, Portugal, Spain, France. But prices are about to go up as cheeses of all types and flavors from the European Union have just been hit with an import tariff. Really, it is impacting people negatively. Co-owner Clara White and purchasing manager Sasha Stanger say certain cheese prices are subject to a 25% increase. Parmesan Reggiano from Italy, Grana Panana from Italy, Buffalo Moth from Italy. One of the items that definitely will be subject to change is Manchego from Spain. The team says they haven't felt a huge impact yet, but they're anticipating a potential hit to their bottom line. So they're looking for alternative solutions to save money. We buy directly from our sources and importing, but in the meantime, just to figure out how to put ourselves in a position of strength as what everyone is doing, we'd reach out to all of our importer partners across the United States and see what they would sell to us at the better price point. Economics professor Dr. Kishore Kutkarni says there are multiple reasons the current administration could be imposing tariffs on goods from Europe. But in the context of cheese, Dr. Kutkarni says it's likely the federal government is hoping the tariffs will help U.S. cheese producers earn more money. As we raise the taxes on the European uh, imports, uh, then the domestic cheese producers like it because the price of imported cheese goes up and then the domestic cheese producers can obviously raise their prices a little bit and then uh, their competition is stopped by this tax. However, in his opinion, tariffs are never beneficial for the economy as a whole. 40 years of economic straining has uh, been telling me that the penalty that consumers pay is much higher than the benefits that the domestic producers get. And when one country imposes a tariff, the other country is likely to retaliate. Then it just becomes a trade war, and this is a war where nobody wins. Ultimately, cheese importers hopes the tariffs will be lifted, but in the coming months, they plan to continue in good spirits, providing their customers with the specialty cheeses they've grown to love. We do the very best we can with a lot of integrity and a lot of heart and soul and and tighten our belts where we can and just do our very best to be a good contributor in the world. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. And hello, it is 544 and I say thank you for joining us. I know you had to work out a little bit here. ABC has the live house impeachment hearings and I think they wrap up at 6. We'll be back on RTV6 Live at the top of the hour, I believe. The showers, they may last a little bit beyond the top of the hour, but ending this evening, the patchy fog that we have now will hold on to overnight. Dry tomorrow, that's a headline. Then the rain comes back quickly on Thursday. Lots of clouds. We've had the occasional light showers through the day. The trend will be toward drying things out. That always takes longer than you think. The clouds will hang in there, that low level moisture around in the fog as well. Steady evening temperatures. And what I mean by steady, you just see a couple degree drop between now and 10 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow morning, as we dry out, once the air dries out and we stop the drizzle and the mist, then the temperatures can make their move. We should be down into the mid 30s. Some locations will be um, slightly cooler than that. Temperatures in the morning with cloud cover in the 30s, 50 or so the afternoon high. That's our optimistic high temperature. Some will miss it to the north, struggling just to get to the 50 degree mark with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Thursday, the difference warmer, definitely windier. Wind gusts over 30 miles per hour, and that's what the sideways rain is kind of showing you there. And 54 degrees for the high temperature. Next four days, temperatures, they go up. 
Then they come right back down. Friday, 43, we'll be down to 32. And I'd say Friday night into Saturday, it's possible we'll have a little rain snow mix. Let's start the now news feed. Mazda is recalling 117,000 vehicles for a second time. It's to replace potentially deadly Takata airbag inflators. The models were made between 2013 and 2017. Notification letters for the recall will be sent out December 18th. Two lawmakers want to make sure that Facebook is respecting your decision not to give location data to the company. Two senators sent Mark Zuckerberg a letter with questions. They want to know how Facebook collects data through Apple and Google's new operating systems. Parents have a new option for children who are nearsighted. The FDA approving the first contact lens to curb myopia. Now the contact is specifically made for kids between the ages of eight and 12. Well, you do want to be careful what you're buying. A national consumer group is making that warning about CBD. The National Consumers League says some CBD pose a safety risk. It also says that more than 83% of customers want the FDA to start regulating and testing it. 70% of them had ingredients that were not listed and they included scary things like arsenic and lead, pesticides, herbicides, toxic, uh, 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 to various toxins in these products. Well, the CBD business is booming right now. Americans bought $500 million of it last year. The market's expected to explode to 2 billion over the next few years, but Sally Greenberg with the National Consumers League says there have been cases where people have gone to the hospital after ingesting CBD, and there are also concerns about claims some companies make. We do not want consumers running to these products thinking they're going to treat very serious illnesses. There are many claims out there that are unsubstantiated that they treat cancer or Parkinson's or uh, diabetes, uh, ALS or uh, AIDS even. The FDA only approved CBD medication for a rare form of epilepsy. The agency also said CBD could be toxic for the liver. Now it is in the process of gathering information on what amount might be safe to use and how often, and that's both for people and animals. A new commercial in South Dakota is turning heads and it's part of an anti-meth campaign. I'm on meth. So am I. Meth is not someone else's problem. It's everyone in South Dakota's problem, and we need everyone to get on it. I'm on that. So the campaign is called Meth, We're On It. South Dakota's governor not only wants to bring awareness to the epidemic, she also wants to get people talking about being part of the solution. Next in our lineup, a look at how virtual reality could change childbirth, what women could watch and listen to during labor, and how this may work to ease their pain. A cottage cheese recall. Take a look at your screen. Breakstones is recalling some of its products because metal and red plastic may be in them. We're talking 16 and 24 ounce containers part of this recall. They have a best buy date of December 10th. Virtual reality could soon play a role in helping during childbirth. Imagine your baby's face, the soft texture of their skin. Now that's just a snippet of what some women are watching and listening to during labor with virtual reality goggles. It's part of research that's being done at Cedar sinai a medical center in Los Angeles. The idea is to see if it can help ease pain as labor gets more intense. Um, what we did find was that women found it um, very helpful, um, that women were describing it as almost um, actually one woman, uh, one of my uh, favorite descriptions of it was a woman spoke about it as being like a virtual doula. Now that's some of the early feedback from women who took part in this study. Dr. Wong said there were some women who found the headset to be isolating because you can't see others. Dr. Wong thinks that VR could be useful whether someone is using pain medication or not. I think it has a potential for the woman who wants to defer her epidural. And then the other thing is there are also women who don't get complete relief from an epidural or who still feel significant anxiety um, even after an epidural. So. The full results of the study will include the pain management scores and will be released in February. Now, it's not opioids or violent crime. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for young black Americans. An author has a unique plan to tackle this. When you teach boys not to cry, you teach boys not to be vulnerable, it looks like that toughness. It looks like that anger. But in the dark, I'm sure there are so many young men that are letting it out. 
Tomorrow, the efforts that she hopes will protect the community. Well, this evening, we've got the drizzle now. I think that will fade away. Some fog and clouds definitely hang in there. Temperature just above the freezing mark during the day tomorrow. Uh, we'll struggle, but temperatures will make an attempt at hitting 50 degrees. The wind will be light and tomorrow will be a dry day. Thanks for watching us. I know you found us on an alternate. Well, it could be the RTV6 app, the IndyChannel.com, Facebook Live, all of those options. But Channel 6 is at the top of the hour. We'll see you for the news at 6 on our TV6 at 6. Lots of sixes.